Hello everyone, you are listening to The Redshift, your connection to your piece of the sky. I'm your host, Emma Miller. Hello, hello, hello. Hi everyone. Hi CHRNV. Hello Illa. Hi Spoons. Welcome, welcome. I hope you have all had a great week. Welcome in. It is great to see you all. Thank you all so much for being here. Hi Madalyn and Karen and Stephanie. Hi. Welcome in. Uh, all right. I hope you've all had a wonderful week. I hope you're all having a great day. All right, so let's hop into this week uh, and chat a little about last week. How amazing was that uh, chat that you all had with that astrobiologist? Wasn't that fascinating? I learned so, so much, and I am sure that Aurora was incredibly happy. Uh, I I didn't get a chance to talk to her, obviously, but I am I am sure that she was very excited that you all had the opportunity uh, to chat and listen to somebody who uh, could really tell you about what life will be like uh, or what life kind of life we would find on Mars. Very exciting stuff. Um, hello, Trinity. Hi, Brick Bond. Hi. Uh, I just want to uh, really quickly add on top of that a quick commendation. Um, I have to say each week you all have been getting better and better and better with your GIF usage in the chat. This is where the audio cut out. So to skip me mumbling to myself, let's just cut to where it comes back. We were talking about GIF. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Thank you, Janutes. So um, I really loved all of your GIF usage over the last couple of weeks. In fact, Janutes, that GIF up above is fantastic. Um, so I would like, love to encourage you all to use gifts more in the chat as well. Um, I especially loved how you all used uh, the weather gifts last week when we got to the weather report. So would love to see that again. Um, I'm basically just issuing you a personal challenge, an Emma challenge, you know? Um, I want a gift for. I want I want you to try to make me laugh and distract me while I'm presenting what I've what I have written in front of me, uh, cause the gifts are very distracting in the best possible way. Um, so let's see who uses the best gifts this week. Uh, it'll be a great time. <laughs> so, uh, I will also preemptively tell you about who our sponsor is this week so that you all get the opportunity to, uh, prepare your, <laughs> your gifts before, uh, before we get there. So preemptively, uh, the sponsor of this week is the Sydney Flight School, where our astronauts get their foundational training. Um, so get prepared for that. Uh, it has flight simulations, microgravity. Be ready. Be ready. So there's your hint. Now to transition into our uh, our ISA announcement of the week, which is a pretty fun, exciting announcement. Um, the ISA actually announced a new manager of one of the mega power reactors at the Mars base. As you know, the ISA works because of shareholders like all of us. Uh, and so um, that new manager, you may know them as Tesla Z. So very exciting stuff. And they wanted me to pass along the congratulations to uh, that new manager. Very, very exciting. With that being said, uh, that's kind of it for our ISA announcements this week. We're going to hop right into our um, our astronaut letter, which will be a fun one. Um, now, I didn't actually get a chance to make the activity this week with the the astronaut. Um, and I'll just tell you who the astronaut was. Um, the astronaut this week was from Bertram Ralph, uh, who was one of the doctors for mission three. So not the first four astronauts, but he came shortly thereafter. Um, he was a super nice guy. Uh, and honestly, it kind of reminded me of my dad, if my dad was German and also you know, living on Mars as a doctor, uh, which he is, he is not. <laughs> um, but he was really, really wonderful. And though he and I didn't directly make the game together, um, I did get to tell him the idea after I received his note and he really liked it. Uh, and it does have to do with what he talks about in his note for this week. So stick around and I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. First, let's hop into the letter, and I found this fascinating, so I hope you all do too. Uh, like I said, Bertram is one of the doctors, so this gives a uh, a very cool kind of view into what it's like to be a doctor on Mars. And so let's hop into it. Keep in mind, as always, as my disclaimer, these are his words, not mine. Uh, I apologize in advance if I butcher any German words. Please go easy on 
a girl from Ohio. Thank you. <laughs> so, hello, I am Bertram Ruff. I'm happy to be writing for you this week. Since you did an ISA medical training simulation some weeks ago, perhaps we are now colleagues, yes? You did very well. You asked good questions. So I thought I could share a little more about being a doctor on Mars. There are some very special challenges. At lower G, things stay in the air longer. Dust doesn't settle as fast. Things get into your eyes. You know what happens when there are particles in the air? You sneeze. You know what happens when you sneeze? The stuff you sneeze also hangs in the air for longer. It's hard to do CPR. When you do CPR, you count on the weight of your body to help the compression. In a quarter G, it's like an eight-year-old trying to do CPR on a grown man. You have to be braced against something hard, and you are going to have to really put all of your muscles into it. Stephanie, that's a great, that's a great gift. <laughs> so here's the thing about being born in one G. Our bodies are made to push blood against gravity. Turn down the gravity, your body still keeps forces, or still is trying to force blood up, up, up. People tend to be a little flushed, sound like they have a cold, and the pressure on the eyeballs can also distort them. One thing you have to take with you is some way to make prescription eyewear because the shape of the eyes will gradually change. And if eyes get injured, that's hard to treat. You know how much a head wound bleeds? On Mars, it's worse, and the blood stays in the air longer too. <laughs> From the beginning of my career, I had a good instinct for diagnosis. It's a little like a mystery story. There is something wrong in a patient's body, a crime has been committed, and until you know who did it, you can't make it right. I enjoy solving this puzzle. A certain case changed my career. A man came in vomiting, hair falling out. He said he had once been a spy and that his old employer had poisoned him. His kidneys started to fail. All my instincts said it must be radiation poisoning, but when we checked with the Geiger counter, there was no sign. I went to talk to an expert to ask if there was some way there could be radiation strong enough to be killing a man from the inside out and yet no gamma particles for a Geiger counter to measure. The answer was polonium-210. Almost no gamma radiation, but enormous alpha energy. Unfortunately, even knowing what had happened, I could not save him. This started me on a new track, learning everything I could about radiation. The expert I had consulted, he was working on reactor designs for the ISA. As we talked, I began to see a way I could take what I, had, I was learning and use it in a new way. If I could help solve the problems of radiation for astronauts in space or on the new colonies on the moon and Mars, that would be work that would help not just one patient, but all mankind. Radiation is a mysterious topic. Ramsar, Iran, uh, has background radiation levels close to those on Mars without showing elevated cancer risk but acute radiation can certainly increase cellular mutations. On Earth, our magnetosphere and our thick atmosphere help protect us from radiation. On Mars, the atmosphere is very thin, and there is no magnetosphere at all. When does this matter? For instance, a big solar flare has almost no impact on Earth, but on Mars, it can cause an acute burst of radiation 50 times normal levels. For this reason, I'm the only person on Mars as interested in lava tubes, tube caves as a roar. To me, it is obvious that in the long run, bigger, a bigger colony must live in a cave. The rock will shelter us from radiation and from the giant swings in temperature from day to night. But exploring caves, it's not so safe. Last week in the cave, Alexander punctured his suit. Well, he tore a small piece, very small. It released the pressure just for a moment. It was patched, patched fast, got Zidunk. But when you go from pressure to no pressure, it creates a vacuum. It pulls on the skin. Think if you have a suction cup against your arm, the way you can pull your skin up with the suction cup. But this was more than just a suction cup, even for a few seconds. Alexander had a roar with him. He had help. He had a calm thinker there. Alone? Who knows? He may have panic. Panicked. It hurts, you understand. It is very painful, your arm in a vacuum like that. When they got back to the hab, he was clutching his arm. He tries to make it look like he's not hurt. It's not like Alex to let pain show on his face, but I'm a doctor and I can tell. I looked at his arm. It was red and purple, bruised to the touch. 
like a knutschluck. In English, this is a hickey, like from the strong kisses, except from, except much larger and pardon, less fun. There is not much I can do for the injury outside of give relief. Help with getting the swelling down with heat and cold, help with gentle pain medication. He needs time to heal. Still, it is the best that can be done here. This is all we can do, the best that we can. Here is one big difference between Earth and Mars. When you solve a mystery on Earth, there is much that you can do. You have medication, you have tools. The patient has an ailment, they now have this cure. If there is no cure, you still know what best you can do to ease the pain and you have access to it. On Mars, it is not so simple. If we don't have a piece of equipment, I can't send you to the next hospital for a test. If we don't have a certain drug, you can't go to another drugstore to pick it up. On Earth, there are many doctors. Here is only Tatiana and me. To help, we have only what they could put in the rocket to bring. So our most important resources are our minds. If we do not have something, we must find another way. Sometimes we must adapt, try new things, be clever, figure it out. I am grateful every day for the safety of the crew, for the fact that problems have been not so severe. Alvez is always saying this planet is trying to kill us. I don't disagree, maybe, but I think he looks at it wrong. It isn't the planet trying to kill us. It's the planet trying to test us, test humanity. The planet has cold and dust and storms and sharp edges. We don't have endless resources, but we have our minds. I think we can pass the test, don't you? See what I mean? Bertram is very likable. He does really remind me of my dad. I liked him a lot. Uh, and I really liked his message. I'm, well, first of all, very glad to hear that Alex is okay. I honestly hadn't even thought about the pain that he would have been in when we heard that letter last week. I, You think about a small cut in a, in a suit, right, or in fabric, and maybe it's not, you know, it's not the first thing you think of is, oh, the pressure. I, I just figured they caught it so quickly, I'm sure it's fine. I didn't imagine the the impact that it would have, which I probably should have. I don't know if you all had the thought before I did, but I'm very glad to hear that he's all right. Uh, that being said, uh, this kind of ties into what our game is going to be for the week. And I'm going to give you all a little preemptive idea before we hop into our sponsor message and our weather message, because this needs you all to help me out. So here's how the game is going to work. And I hope you're listening because this is going to be a great way to get XP. Now, previous games, if you participated at all, you got that fancy XP boost that Stephanie gave you. Very exciting stuff. I know we love to, uh, to get that XP. This game, it's going to be a little bit harder. So my game is as follows. I want you to imagine that I am the ISA. Me, Emma Miller, the ISA. I get to decide who gets points and who doesn't get points. To get points this week, the game we are playing is What Are You Bringing to Mars? I want to hear what you all would bring with you to Mars. Now, to be clear, this does not have to be very serious and you do not have to think of, you know, the spacesuits and the medicine. I don't want those. I want you to think of what you would bring to Mars. And where this is going to come down to you getting points or not getting points, you have to convince me why you would bring that item to Mars. And I will tell you, GIF usage is convincing. So if you can create a, a compelling reason using GIFs, it might swing me in your favor. I get to decide what everyone brings. So let me tell you what I would bring before we hop into our sponsor message and our weather message. Start thinking about it. You know, think about what you'd bring. Don't tell me yet, because you're gonna have to explain yourself and I'm gonna call on each of you to explain. I would bring a video game console. And there are some very obvious reasons why, right? I mean, it's, it's just so clear. So why would I bring a video game console? You see. I would bring a video game console because video games, they make you happy. 
you play them, they keep you entertained. It's a great time, right? So there's number one, well-being, obviously. Uh, Also, it is a great way to virtually visit familiar Earth-like landscapes if you're feeling homesick. Again, really helps with the, the, you know, thinking about everything, making you feel better, mental well-being. Number three, teaches hand-eye coordination. We all have super fast reflexes in case we get attacked by aliens. You know, you gotta you gotta be speedy. And of course, uh, it's a really great way for you to train. There are so many racing games that you can play on video game consoles that'll teach you perfectly how to drive a Martian buggy, right? Right? And so that's why we are bringing a video game console to Mars. So with that as my example and with uh, this great gift that is showing you exactly what I would look like while playing a video game on Mars, <laughs> um, I am going to cut to our, our sponsor message and our weather. So you start thinking, start thinking about what you'd bring, and I'm going to call on each of you if you post a gif or post a, like your explanation. And if I like your explanation, then you will get it added to our list of what we're bringing to Mars. Uh, And at the end of our game, uh, we'll decide who gets points. So with that, let's head on over to our sponsor message. So you want to be an astronaut. You have the knowledge. You have the training in your discipline. You have the passion. Now you need to take the final step. If you're a bird ready to spring from the nest, the ISA's Flight School is where you can learn to spread your wings and fly. Located in Sydney, Australia, Flight School is the base course that prepares our astronauts for subsequent specialist training in their particular fields. It's not easy. Long hours in the classroom build knowledge in astrophysics, geology, chemistry, and more. But that's only the beginning. You will plunge into pool work, flight training, and many hours in our detailed simulations of low pressure and microgravity environments. Understand that many walk into flight school, but only the best will walk out as fully-fledged ISA astronauts. Flight school is where teams are born and friendships forged enough to forge strong enough to withstand everything the Red Planet can throw at us. The work done in these first few years of training will determine the trajectory of your life and maybe the fate of humankind for years to come. Are you ready to leave the nest? Join your fellow prospective astronauts for the flight of a lifetime at ISA's Flight School. And now for our weather report. With clearing skies, temperatures are undergoing greater extremes with lows of negative 95 degrees Celsius, but a possibility of going as high as five degrees Celsius. And that's five positive degrees. That positive temperature sounds like a bigger deal than it really is. At Mars's pressure, the melting point and boiling points of water are essentially the same, so ice tends to go into gas directly. However, our astronauts will be keeping an eye out for the rare but possible sight of liquid water. Pressure is still quite low, even for Mars, expected to be a steady or to be steady around 640 Pascal. Uh, winds from about 180 degrees east of north, which is actually our south. Um, and they're ranging from 5 meters per second to 20 meters per second, or 20 to 55 kilometers per hour. Just fairly calm. All right. Now is your moment to shine. Uh, all right. Let me let me scroll back. Let me scroll scroll back. Let's see. So, uh, Stephanie, you shared a very interesting uh, gif of is that a a shoehorn and Vaseline? Uh, would you care to explain why you would bring a shoehorn and Vaseline? Um, so that I. Uh, I can make the decision on whether or not we're going to include your your contribution. I'm going to start taking notes. <laughs> uh, if you want to share your, uh, this goes for everybody, if you want to share uh, your ideas, make sure that you also add in some words so that I know exactly what you're talking about, Brigham, uh, and why. 
Uh, all right, let's see what else. It looks like maybe Sky wants to bring a piano or a cat or a piano and a cat. I want some, I want some understanding. What are we bringing here? Uh, CHRNV, is that a guitar? Is that what we want to bring? Guitar? Sky also has a little violin. The Martian, are we bringing baseball? Broccoli maybe is bringing ping pong? Hmm. Uh, all right, so Stephanie says those caves seem quite dangerous, easy to get stuck. Okay, okay, so that's what we'd use the Stuhorn and Vaseline for. All right, interesting, interesting. That's a good reason. Let me think about it, let me think about it. Uh, a tennis table, okay. Why, why broccoli? Why are we bringing a tennis table? Sky says, I'd bring a set of musical instruments, including a piano, because music would be great for well-being. Ooh, also I'm curious about how music would sound in the thinner atmosphere of Mars. Would sound travel, travel better or worse on Mars? Sky, I think you're gonna be my first addition to our Martian packing list. Because that is a very good question. If you bring a set of musical instruments, then you can, you know, give everyone something to to play with. And I think that's a very good experiment. I like that a lot. So Sky, we're gonna bring a set of musical instruments. I'm typing it up. Beautiful. All right, there's number one. Other than, of course, my video games, which obviously are getting brought. Um, all right, the Martian said said baseball gear. Tell me more, Martian, tell me more. Uh, Manja says golf, gravity experience must be awesome. Okay, okay. Is it only for the gravity experience? Hmm. I need to know more, I need to know more. Convince me, why would we bring golf? <laughs> uh, can I bring a jacuzzi hot tub? Karen, that's an interesting idea. It would, I mean, what would be the reasoning behind bringing a jacuzzi hot tub? You can convince me. I can be convinced. Great for, oh, okay. So Broccoli says that a pool or a table tennis would be great for team building and keeping astronauts in good shape. Broccoli, you know what? I kind of, I, I like that. I think that that's a good idea for team building and keeping astronauts in shape. Uh, good exercise and it, and it's compact. See, that's I think what sells me here. It is compact. It's something that you can fold up, can fit it into a ship. I like that broccoli. So so far we have a set of musical instruments. We have broccoli's table tennis. Uh, all right, and then my of course video games. Very important. So we're just ignoring the easy bake oven then. Well, I need I need an I need to understand why you want to bring an easy bake oven. Let's let's hear. Uh, let's hear what your thoughts are. <laughs> Baseball gear, to have fun and also to experience with physics of the game in lighter gravity and also the well-being of astronauts and also to remember our roots on Earth. Interesting, interesting. I went with my, okay, I will add, so CHRNV, I'm going to add you to, to Sky's, uh, you guys can be co-partners of, of that because the musical instruments, I like it, I like it. That feels good. Uh, plus one for Manja, golf clubs are also replacement antennas. And you can use them to beat down aliens. Vellum, <gasps> that's very smart. Okay, okay, so let's give let's give both Vellum and Manja. I, I, I'm down, I, I, you've convinced me. All right, we're bringing a golf, golf, golf clubs. Especially with the replacement antennas. That's, I mean, that's a big one, right? Pets can generate some well-being. Ooh, okay, what kind of pet are we bringing? What kind of pet are we bringing? I don't know if, do we think that there are Martian, do, like, do we think that there are uh, suits for pets yet? Um, I, I think I can also be convinced about baseball gear. I think I can add that into broccolis. So we have table tennis and maybe baseball or I, you know, add that into golf. Cause I, I do think that we're, I think we're 
that's a, a compact thing. It's just one metal bat. We could always repurpose the metal too. So uh, much like the golf clubs, I feel like that argument gets made for that as well. So let's add golf and baseball. All right, and we'll give that to Martian as well. I like it, I like it. Golf tournament tournament on Mars to raise a profile of Mars settlement. <gasps> Ooh, Chris is out here coming up with a whole public affairs plan. I like that. Hmm. Chris, I think we can add you to that list as well. I, I like that you guys are... I like that you all are coming together to convince me. I, I think that this is this is working out well. We're we're creating a team. It's it's pretty great. Uh, smashing everyone like that after a long journey. <laughs> Golf or baseball to decompress. Yeah, you could smash like little balls of dust on the planet. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Uh, Spoon says a deck of cards, fun and team building. You can also wager food. Huh. Now I do think. I do think that there are likely decks of cards on the planet. In fact, I have it on good authority that that's the case. But I like where your head's at. I like where your head's at. And I also like the you can wager food idea. Uh, so I I could be convinced of that. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, though. That might, be, that might be a little too easy after all these other ones. We need some, like, variation here. We have a lot of stuff just for, you know, the sake of... <laughs> playing games, which maybe that's all we need. Uh, so Dragon uh, said treats made with love are good for morale and it only use the power of a tiny light bulb. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I wasn't sold on the Easy Bake Oven beforehand, but I think you're right. Very, very minimal power usage. That's convincing. Comes with prepackaged ingredients. I think the only thing you might need to bring are eggs, but I, I'm pretty sure that there are egg substitutes. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm, I'm hearing you. I, I'm hearing you. I think it's important. You know, flavors on Mars are not always the best. You're going to have some pretty standard food. I'm, I'm into it. So uh, let me add this in. So to drink them, uh, I'm adding in our Easy Bake Oven. So, so far, we have a set of musical instruments. We have table tennis, we have golf and baseball gear, and an easy bake oven. Uh, and of course, my video game consoles. Uh, we'll play the instruments. You will have plenty of time to learn. That's very true. Obvious pet for Mars is a red set. Oh, <laughs> a red setter. I actually thought you were going to say a rock <laughs> for a quick second. I, I, <laughs> I inserted the idea of a, a pet rock <laughs> into that, which who knows? Um, love that, love that. <laughs> We're going to die on Mars. No, no, no. We're going to have the best time, Janines. Um, over time, the use of industrial hemp has evolved into an even greater variety of products, including health foods, organic body care, clothing. Oh, interesting. Huh. So maybe hemp becomes a product that we use or a, a plant that we, we plant there to use it for a variety of different things. That's an interesting idea. Hmm, and we got a GIF. Sustainable. I I think we'd have to talk to uh, the ISA about that one. Um, I don't know that I can put that into our ISA. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we can put that into our packing list. Um, Though, I mean, I know, you know, it does get used for a variety of other products. Hmm. I'll have to check with the ISA on that one, Brick Bond, but I like where your head's at. That's some, that's some good thinking. And maybe a little bit more realistic than <laughs> an Easy Bake Oven, but I like it. Cats roll Mars. All right, we bring in a cat to Mars. Is that what we're trying to convince me? Or a turtle? Hmm. Hmm. Nobody dare bring Monopoly. It will destroy the colony in one night. Tronity, I like that. That is, that is one of those games that is pretty consistently <laughs> a, uh, a friendship ender. Um, you'd think by 
you know, the late 2030s, we would have found a different game that could ruin all of our friendships. But here we are. Boomerangs. Oh, that's interesting. I wonder if boomerangs would have the same, uh, would have the same trajectories on Mars with the air pressure being what it is. I feel like it likely wouldn't come back. There's not a lot of wind. Interesting, interesting. I like the idea. All right, I'm looking for one more thing. One more thing to add to our list. Currently, we have a set of musical instruments. We have a table tennis uh, set up. We have golf and baseball gear. And we have an easy bake oven. I'm looking for one more thing to add to our list and one more person to get given that XP. Rick Bond, I'm gonna add you as a as an as a I'm gonna put you in there. Uh, not I still am looking for one more. Um, but I'm gonna put you in there so that I can check with the ISA and make sure that we would be okay with adding that to our packing list, you know? But I like I like what your I like where your head's at. CHR and V, are you saying fireworks to bring fireworks to the planet? I I'm gonna go ahead and deny the request for fireworks just right off the bat. Because I think if we bring fireworks to a planet where we have to <laughs> we have to prevent um, you know, explosions uh, in our habitats perhaps bringing a <laughs> literal tiny bombs uh, is probably not the <laughs> best idea. The whole collection, please. Just the Harry Potter book series. Wow, those are... Hmm. I, I need more convincing. I need more convincing. Why would we bring the whole series? <laughs> a hibachi barbecue grill. Oh, so we're gonna, I, I like where your head's at. You're, you're thinking food, and I like that. I like that. Swiss Army pocket knife? Hmm. Hmm. Martians have got to eat. That's true. They do have to eat. I need something that's really going to convince me. I need something that's going to blow me out of the water. A punching bag? cooking pot extra underwear I like it I like it actually Stephanie what are we referring to in that which of the, the parts of it the holy holy bible I don't know if I, I I think that that's probably something that the ISA lets the astronauts each bring you know uh whatever their their text would be the guy <laughs> I like that hmm I think we bring a shifty eyed monkey. I like it. A telescope. Manja, I like where your brain's at. I'm sure that would be a good one. I like the extra under also. Excited microwave noises. We just bring a microwave. We need to cook. <laughs> Okay, Stephanie, you win. All right, that's our last thing that we're packing, and that's a chef. <laughs> that really got me. I like that. All right, Stephanie, you are on it. That's that's our a cook, a chef, a Swedish chef. It's perfect. <laughs> All right, so at the end, our final list of our items that we are um, bringing to Mars so that we have the resources that we have all needed. Uh, it is a video game console, a set of musical instruments, table tennis, golf and baseball gear, an easy bake oven, potentially some hemp plants, and a cook. I think it'll be perfect. We might last a weekend and only a weekend, but we will have had a very enjoyable weekend, I think. <laughs> I'll be sure to pass this list along to Aurora and to Alex uh, and, of course, John Alves and all of the 
Russian uh, base astronauts and and find out what their thoughts are on our list and see what they have to say. I'll try to see if I can get some kind of message for you all uh, for next week. With that being said, thank you all so much for playing our game this week. Um, so everyone who is here will get a small amount of XP, but if you were chosen uh, in that list of uh, people who convinced me on what you were going to pack, you'll be getting a little bit of extra XP. Um, and that was that was so fun. I'm glad that you enjoyed it, Brick Bond. I hope you have all had fun. Um, next week, we will, of course, have some more exciting stuff for you. So I look forward to chatting with you all next week. Uh, it's also very nice to see some new names in here. And Tesla, uh, congratulations. That's very exciting. Uh, happy to have a new manager. Uh, nice work team indeed, Manja. I agree. With that, I am signing out for the week. It was great to chat with you all, and I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.